welcome back to Ljubljana. We hope you enjoyed our recent series from the Slovenian capital. In today's episode, we have some bonus clips. We will be offering you some top tips on what you can do to make the most of your stay here. And we'll be recreating one of the dishes that we have enjoyed while we've been here. So let's start the show. Look up onto the hill. The castle dominates Ljubljana and you will see it from many points around the city centre. Just take a look around you. Voda is the name for water in Slovenia. And this bottle of Voda was 39 cents. Not bad. You will find little buggies going through the city center and you can check online to find out if you are eligible to be able to travel in one of them to save your feet. In Slovenia, they also speak Croatian. Some of the words are the same. So you've got Havla, which is thank you. And then there's also Dobradenja. And what does that mean? Good day. Or something. I, I believe so because I remember the waiter in Dubrovnik, Dubrovnik teaching us that. Well, we've seen similar words. So if you know a bit of Croatian, then you might be able to speak a bit of Slovenian. There is lots of wildlife in Ljubljana. Look out for lovely little Tweety birds who will just sit admiring the view, like you could do too. Haven't you thought that being here in Ljubljana has felt very safe? Mm. We've been able to walk around the streets and not once have we felt under threat in any way. Of course, it is always advisable in any city to be aware of your surroundings and maybe not hold your iPhone out at arm's length like I'm doing now, unless you're sure there's no one around. Look out for the trees in Ljubljana. There are some really interesting species. The branches all seem to be joining together from one tree to the next. Paul, I see you're admiring the river. Mm. And it's lit up at night, isn't it? Yes, so underneath a couple of those bridges, it is fluorescent green in the evening. And that will light your way along the side of the river. One last thing, the river is a bright green. I don't know whether it is the natural um, sediments and the things that's in the water or whether it's on purpose, but it is very, very green. So even though it's lit up green at night, do you think it's just a white light and it's reflecting off the algae? I'm not sure. <laughs> Ljubljana is such a walkable city. You don't really need to take the bus or taxi or train anywhere. You could do most of it by walking and it is really good for your health. There are bicycles everywhere. Just watch out that you don't get run over. There are also lots of delivery people around and they are mostly on bicycles, but some may be on scooters. I'm not sure this guy's delivering anything. Keep an eye out for doggies. They are everywhere. Paul, this is the Saturday market, but it's a Wednesday. Yes, this is the Saturday market on a Saturday. This place is heaving with stalls and lots of fruit vendors, veg vendors. I think on a weekday, Today is a Wednesday, so there are still some vendors out, but not to the extent that you would get on the Saturday because of the trade. But I do believe that they are still getting a roaring trade, but I think some of them are just not here. But this is the point to you. If you do want to see 
the Saturday market on any day of the week except Sunday, which this place isn't open on a Sunday, then come on by and visit the Saturday market where you will find fresh produce and get local ingredients. Look out for signs of the dragon everywhere around Ljubljana. It is the symbol of the city. Paul, you're obsessed with this milk machine. For those of you that want to have fresh, unpasteurized, unskimmed, fresh, raw milk, you need to buy the bottle, which is 30 cents. And I believe this is the milk, which is a, a euro. And you would get the bottle and then you would have to insert the coins into either this machine or this machine and then it will fill it up to the rim just like this it says insert the coin set the bottle under the tap press start stop button to begin or end filling so this is your way to enjoy fresh milk if you want it to be as fresh as it can be. Louie! If you wanted to see more about the city, you can do a boat tour to get some other views of the city. If you are looking for a cheap local beer, the beer of choice should be Union, which is produced here in Ljubljana. The other local beer that you would be able to buy at a cheap price would be Lasko, which is produced near Selji. Whether you are arriving or departing Ljubljana Airport, Bear in mind, it is a very small airport. It's a single terminal. There is actually an older part of the terminal that you can visit and there's a souvenir shop there. And also to bear in mind that the taxis are actually quite expensive. They will barter with you, but if you want an easier and cheaper option, you could avail of the shuttle. Now, I wish we knew that when we arrived because there is actually a shuttle desk, but we were so desperate to get into the city that we went for a taxi. We did get a shuttle back from the hotel. Though. There is a bus, but then that takes much longer. I think it takes yes. about 40 minutes to an hour and it runs only once an hour. Yes, it seems to run to um, meet the flight schedule. At rush hour, there might be an extra bus or two. But for the bus, it is four euro. For the shuttle, it is 12 euro. And for the taxi, well, online so it says 40 euro, we paid 50. And the, the guy first quoted guy you. quoted us 70 to go into the city. So those are the travel options. It's no illusion. You're watching It's Paul and Marcus on YouTube, so please subscribe. I'm not even sure we had any traditional Slovenian food when we were in Ljubljana. Maybe at the breakfast, I think there were some sausages and the cakes as well. So I went on to YouTube, of course, to research what sort of dish I might be able to make. There were quite a lot of sweet ones, but there seemed to be far too much work involved in them and I wanted something simple. And then I discovered goulash. I didn't even know what it was. It's was basically almost like a slow cooked casserole. And Isn't Paul, that like a stew? Yeah, and you said that it's uh, sort of known throughout Eastern Europe. I think that I've heard of it like in Poland and in the Czech Republic. Yeah, and probably Slovakia, I would say as well. Mm -hmm. But it is big in Slovenia. We know that, not because we had it there, but because I watched a Slovenian YouTube channel okay. and found out this recipe. And all you need are two to three onions, a couple of carrots, five cloves of garlic, which seems quite a lot to me, um, a bunch of uh, slow-cooked diced beef, and 
three bay leaves, salt and pepper, some paprika, and salt. Did I say salt and pepper? Mm -hmm. Anything else? Carrots? No, oh, I said the carrots. Oh. Yeah. You can see that I hastily wrote the recipe down off YouTube. Here's the beef that we got. It's supposed to be like stewing beef, and we couldn't find that. So what was the one that we got? Diced. Just diced beef. It was generic. D d diced generic it, beef. It five hundred. Mention nothing about the like the slow cook or whatever. Oh, there is one other ingredient: beef stock, but that comes a little bit later. So let's get going. I think with this, it takes a while for it to actually heat up. No, just... This no. is your Le Croisette, Paul, we're using here. I think you need to let it um, heat up because it takes a while to heat up. But should I put the oil no. on? No. Really? No. Okay, so while it's heating, let's go through the ingredients in a little bit more detail. What do we have? So these were two sort of medium-sized onions, and these go in first. And what we want to do is cook them until they become translucent. Well, I think it means basically soft because in the recipe, uh, they used white onions, but these are red ones that we've got. The carrots, you had already um, boiled these because- They were gonna go off. Yeah. Was, no, because we had them maybe uh, about a week. Yeah, so you boiled them to save them. And actually, once the five cloves of garlic are all chopped, and you've done it beautifully here, Paul, Oh, it's quite strong. It actually doesn't look like that much. It is a lot. I suppose, yeah. And we've got the paprika here. I'm not an overly big fan of it, but uh, it's only one and a half teaspoons. Mm. We've got the, the bay leaves. And these are just for, for taste, really, aren't they? No, what do they I do? think that they go into the Did, stock. Yeah, but what do they I actually do? I think it flavours it. Yeah. And, oh, is this my mm. coffee for later? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, that's not coffee. Oh. It's uh, beef it, stock. Oh, it's, um, it's, um. It's bulb roll. No, it's, no, um. It's this. No, it, it is that paste that you Stop don't up. like. It oh. is that, um. Oh, I know the one. It's, uh, what? Oh, what? you'll you'll remember. Vegemite? <laughs> oh, the, oh, the Vegemite, the Marmite. <laughs> so do you think this is ready for some yeah. oil? Yeah, yeah, oh. I say He's meat, the I say... Right, you, the meat doesn't go in yet, my dear. I say put the oil in now. Right, okay. I think we're ready. Quite a liberal amount, I'd think. Wouldn't you? You've never cooked in my Le Creuset before. I've never, well, I was going to say I've never cooked before, but... Uh, no, Keep I going. think that, yeah, I think that you're good now. Right. I think that I'm very protective of this because this cost a lot of money. <laughs> it came from the Le Creusot shop, actually. In Oxford? No, at Vister Village in Oxfordshire. Mm. Right, I just need to dry my hands a little bit there. So how long is it going to be till this heats up? I think it's fine now. Because I'm eager to get going. Don't we need to lower the heat? Shall I start and put some in to so spread the oil no. evenly out a bit? You're good now. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of sizzle. Don't forget to pour it in the garlic as well. Well, the onions go first and they need to be cooked until they're softened. So this could take a good few minutes. How do you think this is coming along? Yeah, I think maybe we need to have it on like a lower heat, do you think? Because otherwise it might get overly um, burny, or do you think this is fine? I think this is fine. They're not soft yet. No. Like some bits are like so hard, I think. Mm. So maybe it should be that one on the side. Should I just move it all around a bit? Yeah. But I think maybe we shouldn't move it too often. Oh, I think this looks as though it might be at the right stage. What do you think, Paul? Uh -huh. Right. Next, the beef goes in. I know you think this is wrong, but this is what it did say on the recipe. Do we need to add flour to this? No. Oh, it's not... Right. There's no flour because it's, it's not being coated or anything in like a batter. And what we'll do at this stage is to put up the YouTube channel's name where we find this lovely recipe. So how much 
do you think this needs to be cooked down? Oh, look, it's turning brown already. Maybe, maybe we put it... I think that's about it. No. <laughs> no? Well, look, no. it's gone brown. No. It's only just gone in. I think that... No. You... Oh, it's hot! <laughs> I... No, I think you, you, you should have keep stirring it. Because it has to brown properly. Oh, right, okay. Oh, this is what I needed. I didn't realise that it was going to be so hard. Duh. <laughs> right, I think that's good enough, don't you? Maybe, like, do a little bit more, like, flipping around. Okay, but it's going to be cooking for quite some time later on. Maybe. Is this just to brown it, really? Yeah. Oh, I see. And then I think we need to add the uh, garlic soon, no? Uh, not quite yet. Oh, yes, the garlic. Yes, I was thinking of something else. Because the carrots are already cooked. Yeah. So why don't you put them in? Well, it says that the garlic should go next. So I'm going to add the garlic. Do you know why we do it this way? Because the... The garlic has a tendency to burn. <laughs> and now we're going to add the carrots. No, no, shouldn't you like, like mix the garlic under first? No. Oh. You want me to hold this? Yeah, like put it underneath or something. I don't know. I've lost a bit of my onion. Do you think we need to add some more um, oil? oil. So, right, next we have the carrots already cooked so they go in so they are going to be really soft <laughs> mm. they might turn into mush we must have carrots in this dish so i think now because the carrots are already cooked now yeah. we can actually cover it with our broth what about that that other stuff. No, I'm following the recipe and it says oh, yeah. cover with beef broth. So okay. here we go. Should this sizzle a bit? Yes. Ooh. Oh yeah. That's a nice sizzle. Oh, you should get the, the rest of those, those bits. A little rinsey bit. Yeah. And I think we should like break this down a yeah. bit around. Because we used um, the jelly from uh, yeah. what Nor. is that brand? Yeah, Nor. Nor. Right. So we've got that like that. Let me refer to my notes. So the next thing, we want to add the three bay leaves. So why don't I like add them in and you can cover it. Bury them or whatever you want to do with them. And then I think we need to... Um, Salt and pepper is next. And then we need to put the heat down. So we've got these little salt and pepper packs that you can pick up from any cafe when you're having your fish and chips. Yeah, just grab a few extra because every penny counts, right? Cost of living. Yeah. So why buy salt and pepper when you are already entitled to take a few? from the cafe. They aren't going to miss it, are they? And there's so little in these anyway. There's actually more more paper than pepper. <laughs> this, this could be... This a could new be segment. Like a, yeah, more paper than pepper. Do and we need to add that? Yes, we do need to add the paprika now as well. Right. I can tip over again. So we'll stir all this around. And then Make we sure need, it all. There's like a clump over here. A clump of pepper or something. No, a clump of that paprika. Pa paprika. Gosh, there's only just about enough room in here for everything. Do we need more water? No, no, no. Okay. I don't think so. We need to hide the bay leaves. Push them under. Okay. Um. So I think may maybe we push it to the back one and then turn down the heat. What do you think? Yes. So what we do now is we're going to cover this. That is going to be really hot. Yep. And we're going to turn that off and move it to the back. 
for a very, very low heat. Very the low. lowest heat, so it's actually on simmer. You have to put that yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be burning. Oh, my dear. There we are. I'm just going to note the time. Is it two hours or three hours? So while we're filming this, it's half past two in the afternoon, which means it should be ready in time for tea. Yes, we have to wait three to four hours. Now, there's one thing. When we watched this video showing us how to do it, it was just the goulash on its own, but you could serve it with potato or rice, Why? you think, Paul? I don't know. Should I make some rice later? I don't know, but there seems to be quite a lot here. To be honest, I think it might be a dish just to have on its own. So if I could click my fingers, I would, but we'll make some little ding noise and it'll suddenly be three to four hours later. Mm. It's exactly four hours later and this has been bubbling along the way. Listen, I just recorded it a moment ago. Listen into this. Don't know if you can hear that, but I'm going to turn it off now and let us see what is here. Oh, look. Mmm. Oh, it smells nice. Do you know what I would like this with? I'd like it in a pie. <laughs> like with a nice big sort of crispy sort of um, crunchy pastry. Do you so, find that it's too watery? <laughs> uh, yes, it probably is a bit, a bit watery and I don't know why that is. But, Maybe I turned the thing down too much. Uh, but you said that you're going to make some rice to go with it. So this is just a little taste test to see how it's turned out. So, and how has it turned out? Well, it smells absolutely divine. And it's very, very hot. So I might have to blow on it. Blow on it. Shall I start with a carrot? It, it should be soft. Well, it looks very soft. It's quite brun. Mmm. Mmm, gosh. That's nice. Let's try a bit of meat. Can you tell the audience whether... It's been infused with all those flavors. Mmm. What do you mm. taste? Mmm. It tastes nice and meaty, but nice and soft, succulent and soft. I mean, that bit there just broke. Look at that. Oh, so mm. is it kind of like a brisket? Mmm. Mmm. Do you know when I make brisket, like it just falls off? Mmm. Is yeah. it like that? This is absolutely delicious. I have to say. But the only downside is that we cooked it for like four hours. Yes, it and it's still four? watery. Oh, gee. But so, that doesn't really matter because it's almost like a sauce which could soak up the rice, right? Mmm. Mmm. Would you recommend this to the viewers? Yeah, and you know what would make it taste even better? A subscribe? That, but also if we were in Slovenia right now. Oh, yeah. It's okay. I know that you are all busy and haven't had time to subscribe to our channel. It's Paul and Marcus on YouTube. But now's the chance. Hit the subscribe button. It's free of charge and it will help us on our way to over a thousand subscribers. So please subscribe. I'm not going to beg, but please. <laughs> For those of you that are inspired by our episode today on Ljubljana and do want to visit, I think that the minimum stay would be two to three days. It really depends on you on how much you want to pack in and how easy going you want to be. But from a rough guideline perspective, I think you would need at least two full days, three days just to be comfortable. But yeah, it is a pretty compact city and you could be doing it all very quickly. So yeah, these are our top tips for you. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel today. For those of you that have liked our channel, hit the thumbs up. For those of you that want to leave a comment, please do so as well. And for those of you that haven't subscribed already, 
hit the subscribe button. It's free of charge and we do want our numbers to grow and grow so that we could bring you wonderful, marvelous content. And if you would like to buy us a coffee to help us along our way, there is a link in the description. Well, that's it for today and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.